And joining me now is Sully Bachakcha, a vice dean at Kadir Haas University, who specializes in cybersecurity. And joining us from London, Madeline Carr, who is a director at the Research Institute for the Science of Cybersecurity. Thank you both for joining me today. Uh, Sully, I want to start with you here in the studio with me. Where are most of these cyber attacks originating from, and what are they targeting? Is it the government? Is it average people? Is it companies? It's, it's a good but a hard question because it's not a static and it's not dynamically it goes this way. It's changing over time. And what we have in a political ground is really affecting the cyber attacks as well. And if you, But if you ask the major uh, actors who are playing over the scene of the cyber domain, I can easily say that the China, Russia, and United States, and both different ways they're interacting between each other. In addition to those, we have also witnessing the cybersecurity firms are portraying the ones of the botnets, which are controlled by a lord, uh, the master, and the master is controlling it from different countries, and these are creating attacks from all over the different parts of the world. To the, even the political scene could not enough and adequate to explain what is going on on the cyber domain. Mostly they are on the government level, but what we have seen recently on the si critical infrastructures, mm -hmm. because they are the one of the highest vulnerabilities of the countries, even they are focused because of the many problems. They are not newly built, they are all built, and to, to renew them takes time. And also the satellite and satellite management has an important role in the cybersecurity hacking, so I can say. All right, I want to get to Dr. Carr in London. Uh, the Turkish government says that it endured 25 million cyber attacks last year. That sounds like a huge number, but put that into context for us. Is that a lot, and what makes Turkey such a, such a target for intrusion? Well, really, I mean, measuring cybersecurity attacks in itself is, a, is quite a contentious issue because a lot of um, incidents or intrusions can be simply people probing or individuals or they can even be um, inadvertent uh, intrusions. So separating out uh, which of those 25 million was kind of concerted intentional effort uh, with some, you know, malicious intent behind it is is quite you know, it's quite difficult. Um, I, I don't know that Turkey is any more a target than any other country. Every government it experiences a high level of, of cyber incidents all the time. It's a, it's a continuous uh, process of trying to defend against them and trying to harden uh, the perimeter of, of our systems. I want to ask you about the Chinese company Huawei, which has a big presence uh, here in Turkey from selling consumer electronics to building large sections of the country's telecommunications network. But recently, it's come under intense global scrutiny, and many countries have taken the U.S.'s lead in denying contracts to Huawei. Is there actual proof or evidence against Huawei, or is it just a U.S. retaliation? Uh, well, there's no, there's no kind of hard evidence in the public domain. That doesn't mean that the intelligence community doesn't, you know, isn't aware of some, some uh, compelling evidence. But this relationship between, um, or this concern about a relationship between private organizations like Huawei and governments goes a long way back. So the, on the, the other side, the Chinese government for a long time was very um, skeptical or, or cautious of uh, companies like Microsoft or, or Intel. There's long been this um, uh, assertion that these private organizations sometimes work uh, closely with their governments in, you know, in order to build in some kind of backdoors or, or access that, that might be needed in a, in a political conflict. But we don't know in, in, in the public, we don't know if that's the case with Huawei or not. Mm -hmm. I want to get back to Sully here in the studio. I want to ask you about Huawei as well because it does have a really large presence here in Turkey. Does Turkey see Huawei's um, commercial activities as a national uh, security threat? I mean, as far as I know, Turkey is hosting the second largest Huawei headquarters in Asia, uh, following the China. I think this gives me a sense that we are not, because the 5G is the main key of the Huawei and what they want to do. The Chinese have noticed something. I mean, the, the main politics of the today's cybersecurity go over the data, datafication. I mean, the old data that we are collecting on the different facilities and activities are really, really important. And to collect information, you have to have some end users, many end users you can control it. United States, in this sense, has a 
huge advantage during the, their established companies like an Apple, Microsoft, and Google as well. The China doesn't have this, and they started to be the enlarge their capability to audit and listen and monitor what people are doing and collect messages over top of them. And Huawei is trying to expand this by using the mobile telecommunication sector mostly over the uh, Wi-Fi and wireless hotspots and all infrastructure part of it, and also end users use cellular phones. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this reason, I think they're going to expand their presence in the area so much. And Turkey, I don't think so Turkey sees that as a part of it because Turkey is looking at its uh, balance of power. On the one side, we are going to be either use American or the uh, European products, or you're going to prefer the Chinese products. It's a, it's a trade-off. And is it really rational? That is a question might be asked here. I don't know, because the indictment that we have seen in the United States shows something, but the if you look from other perspective, we have no idea what United States is doing China. Mm. I'm sure there is a huge debate and warfare is conflict based warfare is going on in the both states mutually, but it is really hard to follow what is going because there's a high, so high level of the attack between each of the parties. Right. And if we have edit, edit this organized crime group, it becomes to be too complicated. Mm -hmm. well, Dr. Carr, talk to us about how global cyber security is different from conventional cyber security. Is it getting more and more important in today's world? It is getting more and more important. And I think it, it differs in, in two key ways, really. One of them is that uh, attacks on, on digital infrastructure are really attacks on critical infrastructure. So, so not just critical infrastructure in the kind of conventional sense that we think about uh, utilities or transport systems, but really increasingly everything we do on a day-to-day -day basis, our, our business, our commerce, our, our communications is, is carried out on, on digital platforms. And so attacking those uh, attacking those platforms is, really undermines the capacity of a society to function. Um, that's different from conventional uh, security, which may see a kind of kinetic attack. But the, the, another way that it, it differs is that it's very, very difficult, as, uh, you know, as this conversation about Huawei and, and the Chinese government shows, it's very, very difficult to kind of ascertain in this complex ecosystem of public and private actors where one begins and, and the other ends. So um, governments now outsource so much of their, their IT systems, they outsource, uh, many of them outsource their offensive and defensive cyber operations. Um, we have this kind of confluence of military contractors and, and governments working hand in hand. And so it's really difficult to peel apart uh, when incidents are a state-based attack or when they're coming from an organized group or, or a, a, an individual. Mm -hmm. All right, certainly a very important subject. Dr. Madeline Carr, thank you so much, and Saleh Bichakcha, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you.